You need to actually translate the words of the correction into a feeling in your body as soon as possible. Hey dancers, it's Kirsten. Welcome back to Twin Talks Ballet. Today I'm going to do a, uh, let's say, quasi-technique tip video because what I'm going to share with you today will really help you to improve your technique by helping you to internalize and more quickly and easily implement the corrections that you receive from teachers so that you can expedite your improvement. Who doesn't want that? So if you've been annoyed by hearing the same correction over and over and over again, and you've just been sick and tired of just telling yourself to remember the concept, and no matter what, it just doesn't seem to be sticking, then please keep watching this video because I can't wait to help you. So the first piece of advice that I wanna give you to help you implement corrections more quickly is this. Understand that the language of the body is not thoughts, it's feelings. So the faster you turn a comment that was given to you, of course, in words, and unless you're some sort of alien and I, I don't know, you receive the message telepathically, then you need to actually translate the words of the correction into a feeling in your body as soon as possible. So if a teacher tells you to lift your toe at or above your knee a little higher in a retiré position, then instead of just nodding your head because it's such a simple correction and using it almost as a reminder, instead instantly or as fast as you can get into that retiré position and focus not so much on the look of the position to affirm whether or not it's correct, well, which of course I do recommend looking in the mirror because it allows you to get that extra sense of feedback in the visual sense to help you understand if you're in the correct position, correct in terms of what it looks like. However, the look isn't really what's going to be most helpful for improving your dancing in the long term. What will really help you after you've identified that yes, your position is now correct tap into and turn your awareness towards what it feels like in your body to lift your retiré. In that moment, you can notice what muscle groups are engaging a little bit more. What does that feel like in your whole body? Is your spine lengthened? How do your other extremities feel? Um, just tap into the both specific and total body awareness that's available to you in that moment so that you can create a memory, muscle memory, ha, huh? um, around that correction. And you, there you go. Then what you've done is you've translated these words into a feeling in your body that, guess what, you can use on stage because you don't have teacher's words and you don't have a mirror on stage. All you have are your feelings and some thoughts going in your head which I would say it's very helpful in a performance to be very enraptured by the moment and of course have your wits about you. You're allowed to think while you're on stage, but I think we've all had that experience where you're a little bit too in touch with your thoughts on stage and you're really not enjoying yourself, you're not being present. So I always recommend that most of your awareness while you're on the stage is on how your body is feeling and the best way to prepare yourself for that stage is by being very aware of how your body feels in class more specifically becoming very aware of what it feels like to implement corrections and do movements correctly that awareness will serve you so much more than just having thoughts spinning around in your head the next tip i have for you after turn the thoughts into feelings is tap into your whole body's experience of each correction that you are trying to implement. So for example, if your teacher tells you to simply articulate your foot more in a tendu, the mistake many dancers make that prevents them from retaining corrections is they isolate each movement so much, which might be fine in one round of practice of a, of a correction, but if all you do in, in order to internalize a correction is just work on your foot, but you're not really taking the rest of, for example, your tendu movement seriously. You're just focusing on the foot. What that's doing is it's removing that correction that could be available to you from its context. 
So of course your teacher wants you to articulate your foot more in a tendu, but if we just focus on the part of the correction that's about the foot and we don't make it about how that feeling of an articulated foot connects to how it feels in your whole leg to do a tendu with the articulated foot, you're going to be much less likely to more permanently retain that correction. And here's why. Let's pretend your brain and the part of it that stores your memories is like a house. If you were walking around in your house and you remembered, oh, I need to go pick up a pair of shoes, you know, <laughs> to leave, which you probably wouldn't respond like that. You'd be like, oh, yeah, shoes. Okay. So where would you go in order to go get a pair of shoes before you walk out the door? You would probably go to your bedroom where your closet is, and then you would go pick out a pair of shoes. If you're about to run out the door and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, shoes, and then you want a specific pair, but you didn't put that pair in your closet with the rest of your shoes, you're gonna spend an extra two or three minutes that makes you more stressed running around your house like, where did I put those shoes? Why is that a disorienting experience that makes it hard for you to go retrieve the shoes? It's because those shoes were not stored in the most easily accessible context. So how does this metaphor apply to ballet? When you are in ballet class and you are told, like I was just saying, to articulate your foot more in a tendu, if you place all your awareness in your practice just on isolating what it feels like in your foot and you don't connect it not only to the, what the leg feels like but the whole body and you do several tendus full out with your whole body, only then, once you make it a total body experience, as if you were doing the combination with the music on as you normally would, then you have actually removed that articulated foot comment from its context that would allow you to retrieve that lesson when you are trying to learn it as you're moving your whole body. So my tip for you really, after you have that understanding of how your brain works, is to really put every correction that you're trying to implement into the context of the total body movement and better yet, in the context of a series of movements. So for example, if you are just working on the portion of a tombe pot de where you are sliding your foot along the floor, what so many dancers will do in order to apply this correction is this. What dancers will do is they will just look in the mirror and they'll go really slow and they'll be like, there. Hi, Constantine, that's my cat. They'll just practice the slide and then they'll stop. Slide and stop. That's all the teacher talked about, so we'll just stop right there. That is not going to work for you very well. What will work for you is, like I said, putting the movements into context. So you will be able to create that helpful, easily retainable, and recallable muscle memory if you practice a whole tombe pas de bourree as you would just with the addition of a more rotated front leg. So I would recommend that when you're applying the correction, you start in fifth position and you follow the same tempo as you normally would. You follow through with the finish. And what that does is it metaphorically puts the shoes back into the shoe closet so that you can find them again when it's time. Hey dancers, I wanted to just briefly pause before we go on to the next point in this video to talk about two unique ways that I would be happy to help you as a mindset coach for dancers and also the creator of a unique program called the Mindset Plus Movement Technique Accelerator Program. So the first one I want to talk about is MMTA, which I presume you might be interested in since you did click on a technique related video. So this program is really a series of private lessons held over Zoom where I combine the power of high level technical instruction that allows you to make key shifts in your technique using kinesiologically sound principles that help you to actually improve quite quickly working with the knowledge of how your body actually works and empowering you with knowledge for how to create change in things like your turnout, your extensions, whatever you are particularly frustrated or insecure about in your technique, I want to help you with that. And I also bring into these sessions mindset coachings because so often what is actually inhibiting us from not only improving in our technique, but being confident in the dancers we see in the mirror is our mind. So I love 
um, that I created this program, which really has a holistic approach to help dancers increase their confidence and also see a noticeable and quick improvement in their technical abilities. This is perfect for you if you're at that pre-professional level or also just a really passionate recreational dancer and you want to see an improvement in your technique, maybe during spring break or prior to going to a summer program or really at any point that you really want a boost in your training, this program is perfect for you. So if you're interested, visit kirstenkemp.com, link is in the description, where you can learn a lot more about the features of this program, how it works, and apply. The second offering I have is Mindset Coaching, which you may have heard about. So this is really a service where I meet individually with dancers over Zoom, and I help them as a mindset coach who is certified in neuro-linguistic programming and other coaching methods to identify what are the limitations beliefs, the insecurities, those fears and moments of self-doubt that actually hold them back from dancing to their fullest potential. You know, those things in your mind that keep you insecure, feeling stuck, wanting to hide in the back, stuck in negative thought spirals in the middle of class when you just want to improve and focus. I know that oftentimes one of the biggest challenges that dancers face is in their mind. So I really created this service to guide dancers through the process of letting go of limiting beliefs, insecurities, self-doubt, messages from teachers that told them years ago they would never make it as a dancer. It's surprising how much you guys, what is going on in here holds you back from feeling great as you dance and in your life. And it also holds you back from becoming the dancer you're fully capable of becoming. So if that's you, if you really want to improve your mindset, start dancing with full confidence and joy again, I invite you to learn more about my mindset coaching services and apply for a free consultation. It's a 30 minute call where you and I discuss what your current challenges are, what you'd like to achieve and how mindset coaching can help you to get to where you want to go and your goals as a dancer. I'd be so happy to speak with you. And again, visit kirstenkemp.com to learn more about either of these programs and apply for a free consultation as well. All right, dancers, uh, let's get on with the video. The last tip I have for you is instead of telling yourself to remember, tell yourself to feel or rather invite yourself to feel what it feels like to do each movement correctly. As a sub point to that, it is important to be able to give yourself feedback, not just visual feedback in the mirror, because of course, using the mirror can be helpful to a certain extent. But I think many dancers are aware of how much just looking at them in the mirror and getting so fixated on how everything looks, it not only leaves you prone to hyper fixating on everything that looks wrong about you and developing a very negative relationship with the dancer that you see in the mirror, but it also drains kind of your um, sensory awareness out of your body. And that sensory awareness, as I've established, is so, so, so important for memorizing the feeling of each movement done correctly. I wanna also emphasize that when giving yourself feedback, it's, you can really only get to that point of being effective at giving yourself feedback if you also tune into what each movement feels like to be doing it a little bit off or to, at the very least, be aware of what some of your kind of bad habits, if you know what those are, maybe it's a sickled foot in coup de pied, if you know what some of your kind of tendencies are that you commonly get corrections on, also become aware of what it feels like to be doing each movement incorrectly so that when you go into a coup de pied every time, you create this kind of um, like a sensor in your brain that alerts you like, oh, okay, this feeling is familiar and when I'm doing it incorrect, it feels like that. And when you also pair that with an awareness of what it feels like to be shaping your foot beautifully, then you can give yourself wonderful feedback without even really having to look in the mirror. And it's so quick, it's so, easy, so much easier because again, you're speaking your body's language. So dancers, I hope this video was extremely helpful for you. If it was, please do give this a thumbs up and let me know if you wanna see more technique tip videos from me, I'd be happy to make more. So make sure you're subscribed as well if you'd like to come back next week for another video and I'll see you next time, bye.